While rejected pitches and cancelled projects have been part and parcel of the filmmaking industry since its inception, talk of failed projects has ballooned over the last decade. Superman Lives and Star Wars Duel of the Fates being probably the two biggest examples that spring to mind. Some pitches are met with rejection near enough from the word go, but that doesn't make them any less interesting, as screenwriting duo Mark Swift and Damian Shannon illustrated when they took to Twitter this month, asking for the weirdest pitches that writers have come up with and why they never got made. Get ready for some cancelled sequels, clever reboots, and a bunch of potentially fascinating crossovers that never made it out the front door. I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com, and here are eight real failed movie pitches that have just been revealed. Number 8. A Rocketeer Sequel Starring Alison Brie Joe Johnston's The Rocketeer is an absolute gem of a film. The film drew praise from critics upon its release, but sadly didn't manage to pull in a big enough box office haul to justify any sequels. Even so, The Rocketeer has amassed a cult following in the years since its release, with a TV spin-off even releasing on Disney Junior in 2019, while a reboot slash sequel is set to debut on Disney Plus at some point in the next few years. All fine and dandy, yes, but what about the other sequels that have been pitched over the last couple of decades? Well, screenwriter Kevin Beagle decided to do us all a solid and answer Shannon and Swift's tweet detailing his failed Rocketeer pitch. Tragically, it sounds kind of incredible. Beagle's idea was to take the Rocketeer's pulpy sensibilities and apply them to the 60s, effectively enabling the film to mirror the actual evolution of superheroes from the golden age of comics to the silver age that emerged after the Second World War. As he elaborates in the thread, this Rocketeer prequel would have also poked fun at 60s spy capers, with multiple elite agents turning up to lecture the new lead before dying all sorts of incredibly horrible deaths. Also, if everything had gone according to plan, it would have had Community's Alison Brie as the granddaughter of Cliff Second. Why didn't this get made again? Number 7. Planet of the Apes vs the Nazis Matt Reeves' trilogy, released from 2011 to 2017, worked as a superb reimagining of the Planet of the Apes franchise and is a great precursor for the original film. However, while Reeves' films were admittedly fantastic, Daniel Kunker's pitch might just beat them out on account of the fact that it is genuinely quite bananas what he pitched. Oh, the bana- yeah, that wasn't intentional. Kunker's idea would have been set during World War II and would have seen American soldiers team up with the apes to fight the Nazis. Kunker goes on to say that the film would have been set in Africa, with the Americans and Nazis vying for control of an important mineral. The twist would be that the mineral in question, sought out by the Allies for use in the construction of the first atomic bomb, was also what made the apes hyper-intelligent. It's a bit out there, but could anyone possibly turn down the opportunity to see Caesar going to town on Hitler's thugs? Probably not. Number 6. Hulk vs John Carpenter's The Thing it may be hard to believe today, but The Incredible Hulk was initially conceived by Stanley and Jack Kirby as a horror comic. The Jekyll and Hyde influence is plain for all to see, but gradually, over time, the Hulk lost touch with his horror roots, being rebranded more as an action character than as the menacing figure he started out as. Those who've been keeping up with Marvel's comics will know that perception of the giant is beginning to change once again. Al Ewing and Joe Bennett's Immortal Hulk series has brought the character back to his horror roots, pitting Bruce Banner and his alter ego against a manner of terrifying creatures since debuting in 2017. With some looking as though they could have been ripped straight from John Carpenter's The Thing. It's not just Ewing and Bennett who love Hulk best when he's in the horror genre though. No, replying to Shannon and Swift's thread, Dick Gruner shared a frankly awesome pitch for an animated Hulk project, which would have seen Banner's other half fight what was effectively the same creature from Carpenter's 1982 classic. It sounds almost like it could have been a storyline from Immortal Hulk, but it never happened. Disappointed doesn't even cut it. Number 5. The Stealth 7 Prequel Believe it or not, this isn't the first we've heard of a failed 7 spin-off. I say failed in the sense that the only other one that went ahead was Solace, an unofficial sequel to David Fincher's 1995 thriller that featured Anthony Hopkins and Colin Farrell in the leading roles. Now though, we know of at least one other Seven project that never really got off the ground, this time from Shannon and Swift themselves, the writers behind 2003's Freddy vs Jason and the 2009 Friday the 13th remake. According to the duo, theirs would have been a stealth prequel to the original Seven, with the huge shock ending being that we were all watching John Doe all along. In their own words, it was how John Doe became John Doe. 
with the conceit being that the audience wouldn't really know it was him until the final scene, which would have been the character going shopping before entering the apartment where the first victim would be tied up. That's a bombshell of a climax, no matter how you look at it. But the project was just never meant to be, with Shannon and Swift admitting that it was probably a bad idea to even try to follow up Fincher's classic. Number four, The Last of Sheila remake. Switching from one of the most high-profile thrillers of all time now to one of the more overlooked mystery films released. Screenwriter Jonathan W.C. Mills replied to Shannon Ann Swift's thread, stating that he'd pitched a remake of The Last of Sheila to Warner Brothers. The project sadly never got off the ground, but as Mills notes in his tweet, the success of Knives Out last year may invite the studio to give the project another shot, even if it's not his original pitch. Remakes are rarely ever not divisive but there's a lot working in favor of A Last of Sheila reimagining. It's relatively overlooked for starters, and given the right treatment, it wouldn't be difficult to see how it could work in a post-Knives Out climate. The basic premise of the film revolves around a movie producer inviting his friends onto his yacht the year after his wife's passing in a hit-and-run incident. A tense mystery then ensues as all the members of the yacht come to realize that the person who killed the titular Sheila is also on board the vessel with them. <gasps> tense. It's a pretty great film if you can track it down, and one we can probably expect to see grace the big screen again in the future. Number 3, Oregon Trail The Movie The Oregon Trail is one of the most notorious video game series of all time. Thanks in part because it possesses an equally infamous game over screen where the player dies of dysentery, by far the most dramatic of all the deaths you could suffer in the Old West. Playing to the legend surrounding the franchise, Ian Shaw's pitch for a failed Oregon Trail film would have seen a city slicker stuck in the worst version of Groundhog Day ever. As the character tried to complete the Oregon Trail, he'd die repeatedly in various circumstances. Sort of like live, die, repeat, but, you know, with more infectious diarrhea. Sadly, the studio Shaw pitched the idea too weren't fans, and ultimately the project never went ahead. Number 2, The Lost Aliens vs Predator film the first Aliens vs Predator film released in 2004 at long last pitted together two of the most successful sci-fi horror franchises against each other after a long line of comic spin-offs. It was okay, and the 2007 sequel wasn't exactly anything to write home about either, but what's important is that the first film was in the works for a long, long time. The first AVP comic debuted in 1989, about a year before the release of Predator 2, which featured a xenomorph skull in the Predator's trophy cabinet. Development commenced on a movie crossover shortly afterwards, with multiple scripts being submitted before the studio settled on one from Paul W.S. Anderson. However, while Anderson had been working on his script, John Terman had also started formulating his own pitch for a crossover. It would have been set in the present day and would have featured US and Russian special forces teaming up to find an energy source stemming from a crash spaceship, only for them to discover both predators and aliens at the crash site. You hate to see it. The film would have also ended with the creation of Wayland Industries, effectively explaining their reason for wanting to capture alien life. Then this is where things start to get a little bit awkward. You see, as Terman explains in his tweet, he pitched this story on September 10th, 2001, a day before the September 11th attacks that preempted the US invasion of Afghanistan and later Iraq, which was also where the bulk of the story was set. With these events in mind, this pitch didn't really ever stand a chance. Number one, the Blade Runner prequel about Roy Batty's origin. Blade Runner is one of the all-time great science fiction films, so anything threatening to touch it has to be ugh, amazing. Although it took a good 35 years, audiences got that amazing sequel in Blade Runner 2049, a project headed by Denise Villeneuve. However, during this time, it's likely that a number of Blade Runner sequels, prequels, and spin-offs were probably pitched. One such concept was developed by Sean Keller, who responded to Shannon and Swift's thread briefly detailing their concept for a Blade Runner prequel revolving around Roy Batty, who was portrayed by Rutger Hauer. Keller's story would have depicted Batty before he realizes he's a replicant. He's sent to quell an uprising, but effectively becomes a synthetic Spartacus when he rebels against humanity. Some will be happy we never got to see this story due to how revered the original obviously was, but it's certainly a clever way of realizing a Blade Runner prequel, seeing as Roy was always the hero of his own story. 
And that's our list. Know of any other real failed movie pitches we may have missed? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down there. Do not forget to like, share and click on that subscribe button. Also, why not head on over to whatculture.com and click on more incredible articles just like this one. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you very much for watching and I'm sure I'll see you soon.